Hi, welcome to the part 7 of handling NetCDF files using Python tutorial series. Now this is a continuation to the part 6 which I did uh, in order to show you how to extract the data using multiple number of uh, NetCDF files as you can see over here. So during that tutorial I showed you how to extract the data from each and every file and merge it into one continuous time series for all the years. But that was for a fixed location. I picked Kathmandu as one of the locations, as one of the examples uh, with, a, with a constant, with a set latitude and longitude value. But for this tutorial, as you can see in this table, I have selected some locations around Asia uh, which has the name of the city and its latitude and longitude coordinates. So from this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to actually replicate that exercise in order to extract a full time series for each and every location based on a given latitude and longitude. Now, in your case, you might have this data as point shape files or, or as a different, uh, different format. So just make sure that you first understand what we are going to do in this tutorial. And then later on, you can apply that same concept in order to transform your data to be used to carry out this exercise. So this is a CSV file. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to read in this data in order to extract this latitude and longitude information along with the name of the city so that later on we can use the code from part 6 in order to generate the time series, in order to generate the continuous time series. Now for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to first import the pandas library because I need to read in this cities.csv table. After I import pandas as pd, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read in this CSV file. We can do that simply by saying cities equals to pd dot read CSV. And since I have my Python script in the same location, I can just say cities dot CSV. And let's go ahead and run this. And now if you would like to have a look at this cities data frame. You can see that we have the la uh, name, latitude and the longitude information. Now if you can recall the code from the previous exercise which I have over here, you can see that at one point I assign the the constant coordinates in this example. I assign the coordinates of Kathmandu, the latitude and longitude at this at this point. But over here what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through each and every row of this pandas data frame. And I'm going to record three things. The first thing I'm going to record is the name, name of the city. And ne next I'm, I will record the latitude and the longitude information. So over here, later I will transfer that information into this area so that instead of running the code only for, for a set latitude and longitude value, we can actually let this code execute for each and every latitude and longitude over here. So for that, let's first write a for loop. in cities dot right now if we say print row and if I specify the name over here what it's going to do is it's going to print out all the cities along with its country like this and if I say I don't want the name but I want the latitude it's going to print out the latitude values so similarly in this manner all right so what I'm going to do is I'm instead of printing it out I'm going to save this information into different variables I can say that location is equal to the name and I can say that location latitude is equal to similar to this but now it's going to be latitude over here the name of this column and it's going to be similar for longitude as well that's going to be longitude which is the name of this column right now let's run this one and see whether we have any issues or not yeah so far it's all right, so what happens is now during the last iteration, it should record this name as the Hiroshima Japan and the latitude and the longitude values. 
we can have a quick check if I say location it should be it should say Hiroshima Japan and if I say location latitude it's going to give me the latitude of that city and also the longitude all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of code well I'm going to take the the entire script from the previous exercise of part 6 and I will transfer it to over here because we are still going to use the same code but we're going to make few changes now I don't need to exclusively import pandas anymore because we are already importing it and I will also now cut this part out and put it over here which means I can actually push this up and now you might be able to imagine that during the first iteration it's actually going to give us Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and then Singapore, Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh like that. So during each iteration we want to execute this extraction of data for each city right so because of that this entire script should be under this for loop. I hope that's clear for you guys. So that means uh, when it reads the information corresponding to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, it's first actually it's going to execute everything as we have requested over here. And later we can program it to actually uh, create its own CSV corresponding to that city. And after that it will move on to the second city and to the third city and so on. So in that case this is going to change. Maybe we define the, la the location, the latitude and the longitude based on the CSV data. All right, now in the previous exercise, since we had a constant latitude and longitude for Kathmandu, we subtracted that from this lat and lon. But in this case, as you can guess now, it's no longer going to be latitude and longitude of Kathmandu, but instead it's going to be the lat and long corresponding to the each city. All right, the rest should remain same except for when we save the file, we can save actually the file by the name of the city. We can say that since we record the name of the city over here under this location variable, we can just add that plus dot CSV. That should do it. And this line of code which we used in order to uh, display which which particular entry is actually getting recorded, maybe we can add one section for this one as well for I can still say location the same variable something like this and now when we run the script it should sort of iterate through each and every row of the CSV table and generate the corresponding temperature time series for all the years all right now let's run this script and see whether we have any issues or not yeah now as you can see it's running and accordingly you can also see which city now it's actually uh, extracting the data for and it just changed from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore and you can see that the files are getting created over here as well the CSV files and now it's extracting the information for Thailand and now for Vietnam yeah for the two different cities of Vietnam Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh and now it has moved to Shanghai Now you can you can just imagine how fast the process is if we were to do it one by one especially when we have a higher number of years and higher number of coordinates uh, it's going to be quite a tedious task but having a script like this is actually going to benefit you in ways that you would never have imagined isn't it so that's one of the benefits of actually using this kind of a scripting language in order to extract the data that in a way that you would want to have it yeah, now you can see that it's extracting the data for Mongolia and South Korea. I think it should be done in a few few seconds, I guess. Yeah, now it's extracting the data for Hiroshima, Japan. And as I remember that that was the last city. So yeah, you can see that now it's done already. Now if you want to have a look at the individual files, what you can do is you can just have a look at the individual CSV files. You can see that this is the temperature variation for for a country like Vietnam, uh, the city of Hanoi, maybe I can have a quick plot and see and maybe compare it with a different city. Yeah, you can see that in Hanoi the temperatures drop even to about like 10 or yeah around 11 during 
December, January, but it reaches up to about 32 during the summer months. And maybe let's have a look at the data of another country like, let's say Mumbai, India. Yeah, for India, you can see that the lowest temperatures mostly are about 19 degrees. But in this case, it has been a special case, I guess, in 1962 and 61, about 17 degrees, uh, quite higher than the lowest temperature values of Hanoi, I guess. And similarly, we can have a look at uh, the temperature values of maybe Mongolia. I assume that it's going to be much colder, the lowest temperatures. Yeah, you can see that the temperatures are actually even dropping below zero all the way up to about minus 33. That's quite surprisingly low. Yeah, and the highest uh, highest values are going to be about like 20s in the in the in the low 20s. So I guess that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, from the tutorial number six and seven, you learned how to extract the data for a multiple number of years and for multiple number number of locations. So. I guess the tutorial was clear for you guys. If you do have any questions, uh, don't forget to comment them down below and we will have a discussion to get your issues solved related to this tutorial. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you with the next tutorial in just a couple of days. Take care.